Jesus Christ on the cross. Then he becomes your father again. Otherwise, you are the child of the devil. That's why it pays me to say, but I have to say because scripturally we are going to demonstrate it. Next scripture, please. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Praise the Lord. If you obey God, you have righteous living. But if you're a slave to sin, which every unbeliever is a slave to sin, because their father is the devil. I didn't say so, the Lord Jesus Christ told us. Please read the next scripture. John chapter 8, verses 37 to 45. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham. And yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. I am telling you what I saw when I was with my father. But you are following the advice of your father. Our father is Abraham, they declared. No, Jesus replied. For if you were really the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you are imitating your real father, they replied. We aren't illegitimate children. God himself is our true father. Jesus told them, If God were your father, you would love me, because I have come to you from God. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? It's because you can't even hear me. For you are the children of your father the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. So when I tell the truth, you just naturally don't believe me. Praise the Lord. Those of you who have been following us and our ministry, you know the truth. You are deserting when you go to preach the gospel. Imagine how God feels. There's a reason many do not believe. Because they have their father, the devil, still blindfolding them. That's why they don't hear. And then you get discouraged and say, I won't go again. No, you have to continue because the Lord Jesus Christ is telling them there, their father, the devil. See, let's, let's put it this way. Anyone as a child of God, who is going to be a child of God, when they hear the truth, something happens in their heart. They may not believe it at that moment or accept it completely, but they will have no rest until they come into that saving knowledge. So you have to persist. Because those who have chosen to believe their father, the devil, will continue to believe him until the day they die. However, through your prayers and my prayers, the yoke can be broken so that their eyes can be opened, so that they can hear the voice of the Son of God and be delivered. So you are not contending with those who are believers. You are contending with those who Father is the devil, who has who is so powerful that he has enveloped them in his lives and given them splendor and love for the things of the world. And don't be discouraged, child of God, if when you enter some of these very big cathedrals filled with such luxurious things, you shouldn't be worried. They don't know God either. And you shouldn't be found anywhere. Because what are you doing there? You can't worship at the altar of Belial. Please, I have to be very blunt here because this is the truth. Of it. That's why there's so much evil in our world today. So much unbelief is because the children of the devil are so much. And those who ought to speak the truth are beginning to join them because they are discouraged. You should not be. I should not be. The important thing is even if it's only you. Hold on to the faith. Once we're delivered to the saints, it's for you to inherit eternal life. Praise the Lord. 
wickedness of fallen humans. Those are the consequences. Which is what from then now applies to now. We're going to read the scripture, please. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. In those days and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth, for whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time, and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. Verse 12, God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Praise the Lord for his word to us. Genesis chapter 6 verse 12. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. Can you see that? Do you see that? Everyone on earth was corrupt. Only one man and his family was found righteous before God. What is God seeing in our 21st century world? If you are sincere and you are spirit filled, you will agree with me that our 21st century world is no better than that first world that God destroyed. Look at all the violence in all the world, all the injustice, all the inhumanity of human beings to one another. And it's not only in this 21st century, it's been going on right from the time of Adam to now. But in our 21st century world, what is God seeing? So much evil. So much evil, so much injustice. I don't want to enumerate them. Maybe I will at some point in the series, if I'm late to. But please, you, you, whichever country you are hearing this message, watch what is going on in your country. Your country is no better than the other one. They have evil that are being covered or being open, depending on how free the press is. Even the press is not free in the sense that there are many biases. But that's not the matter now. The point thing is, our world today is as wicked or more wicked than the world that God destroyed. That's how God sees it. Unbelievers of our time are wicked, more wicked, I believe. And I will even say many who claim to be believers in our world today, love the world more than they love God. And once you do that, you are not, God casts you out because God, you can't take the world before God. When you take the world before God, you're taking the devil before God. Because the devil is still the ruler of the world. The devil is the ruler of the fallen world. Christ is only ruling his church. The church that will eventually come to rule the earth when that time comes. But until then, the devil is still in charge, but God, of course, restricts depending on his purposes. 
Many believers are given to the pride of life, to opulence, to even wickedness. Some do exactly, Father, I'll say many do exactly what unbelievers do. And let me say something. Just like the first woman, wherefore blindness does not cut it. You know, sometimes, oh, we didn't know. It does not cut it. There is no excuse for you and I not to read the Bible on our own and to believe God and his word more than that of any human being. There is no excuse. Like I say again, wherefore blindness will not cut it on the last day. So if you like, if I like, let me continue to follow these so-called big daddies and mommies in you people's organizations. It will not bring your eye to heaven. It will take you away from God. I want you and I to know today, as I'm concluding, that God is just. If God destroyed the first world, why would he not destroy this world? And very soon too. God made judgment. He, he delivered judgment in that first world. And as we shall see next Sunday in subsequent worlds, before our own, or dispensations, depending on what you are, but I would prefer to use worlds. Be a just God. He has to weigh us on the scale. Of the first century world, I'm sorry, of the of, of the world of uh, our first the first woman, and I suspect that we are right there now if we are not even tilting it further. So be a just God. What do you think is going to happen? He will always bring judgment on the disobedient, no matter the period of human history, and we're at that point right now because it is too much. Even it's too much in your homes, in your homes. Evil is too much in your countries. Every country in the world, if you think your country is free, send us to your country. We will make a dissertation on it and tell you why evil has so amassed your systems. All of you, all of us are guilty. So we, like Daniel, must need to intercede, but not for the world. Remember Christ said, I do not pray for the world. I pray for those who are following me. You are going to intercede for the children of God who have known him but by sleep, number one. You are going to pray for those who are children of God, but they have not yet known the children of God. They have not had the message. They have not had the true gospel of Christ. That's where you and I will judge. If you and I fail to let people know, because you don't know who God has called or who we hear. So we tell everybody. Believing that those who are his children will hear the voice of the Son of God and will do what? Be saved. So you and I will be judged if we fail to continue to pronounce the gospel of Christ and to live in accordance with it. But when we do, he is with us. And he said, I'll be with you. Up to the end of the age. So today as we sing this song, we're going to prepare us to worship God. Ask him to prepare us so we at all times we worship. No matter our circumstance. Don't ever look at the world's circumstances. Always look unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before me endured the cross. That's who you and I should what? Follow. Let us sing this song. Prepare our hearts to worship you, the ever faithful, ever true Son of God. Forgive our sin. Make us new, O oh God. Prepare our hearts to worship you, dear God. Prepare us for holy ground. Let our defenses tumble down. Come and do what only you can do, O oh God. Prepare our hearts to worship you.
Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to worship you at all times, no matter the circumstance. You are the ever faithful, the ever true God. Forgive our sin and make us new. Prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, to worship you at all times, no matter the situation. Prepare hearts for holy ground. Let our defenses tumble down, dear God. Come and do what only you can do. Prepare hearts to worship you. Prepare hearts to worship you, dear God. Prepare hearts to worship you. We worship you, dear God, in Jesus' name.